inside my own world of make believe. Hello, everyone. This is Phoenix Tremaine, and today I have my first guest on the Phoenix Tremaine Dream Master podcast, Miss R.C. Miles. Uh, she's going to be sharing her dreams with us today. And as you can see, we are sticking with the theme of dreams. Uh, we're in our jammies. <laughs> so so uh, the, the podcast itself is evolving. With each progressive episode, I come up with like new ideas on how to just 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 do it better than the last one. And um, welcome, RC. Uh, how are you Hi, today? Phoenix. I'm great. How are you? So I'm good. I'm good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, everyone. I am RC Miles. It's rude to ask a woman her age, so I won't say. Except I'm older than 25. Hard to believe. I want to talk about dreams. I suffer from PTSD in an extreme way. My PTSD comes out in my sleep, and it's really just the equivalent of being trapped in hell. I don't wake up until my dreams let go of me, and I wake up screaming and gasping for air, and that's when it's over. I do believe that dreams are our portal to the other side, whatever you believe that that is. We have this side and the other side. And I believe our dreams are here to give us messages if we are paying attention and if we are receptive. Okay. Um, so what dream are you going to share with us today? Like, what would you like to call it? Well, I'm going to be telling you about visions from beyond. This is a dream where I believe I had direct contact with my mother who has passed away when I was very young. Okay. And so is this one of the PTSD dream situations you've been in or is this something different? No, this is something very, very different. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, watchers know that, you know, I've had episodes talked about my mother from the beyond. So it's going to be very interesting to hear someone else's point of view on that. And so, you know, let's get to it. Hi, everyone. I'm back with you, and I'd like to share with you a dream that I had of my mother. My mother passed away when not too long after I turned 13. She was very ill, and it was very traumatic, it was very scary, and it was very lonely. For a very long time, I wanted to see my mother. I wanted to know where my mother was. I knew she, wherever she was, it was good, but there was not much comfort in being left alone at a young age without my mother. I didn't necessarily, that night, bring it into existence but I know it had been on my mind for quite some time. But time did go by before the message came through. I don't believe I was ready until this particular night. And it started out like any other. But once I was cognizant of my dream, the first thing I remember, and I don't wanna say that it was dark, it was more like sitting on grass but no other visual than that. And I could smell my mother. My mother wore a very distinct perfume, Fendi to be exact. Not many people I've smelt that on, so I knew it was her. All of a sudden, I was unleashed into this world that I could have never imagined. When people speak of the Rainbow Bridge, this gives it a whole new meaning. I did not know that the vibrancy of color, of sound, of dimension would be so strong. For me, this is how I knew what was happening was very, very real. I can't even describe what I was seeing. I'll do my best, but it's very hard to take something from the other side and clearly describe it. There are things we humans 
will not be able to fully understand until we are there. So I will do my best. I want to say it was almost like I was somewhere that was dipped in glitter and rainbows. There wasn't a sky per se. It was more like a backdrop, but it was the most beautiful backdrop that I've ever seen. The colors, it was like a movement of air, but the movement was so beautiful and so relaxing and so calming. I knew that I was not in danger and I knew not to be afraid. And then I saw her. I saw her in all of her glory. I saw her at herself when I was roughly a year, a year and a half old. It was her. Everything about her was there. Her skin, her fingernails, Every single thing about her was exactly as I remembered it. It's not that she talked. It's almost like when you hear mediums saying that they just see visions and it's not so much words that they get as visions. It was very much so like that. She was showing me I can't quite say pictures, but images of what she was around. And I knew that was happening. Again, it wasn't like she was speaking to me, but she was showing me. Ironically, she always wanted a convertible red Mercedes, which was there. <laughs> it was parked right there next to the garden that she always wanted. She loved gardening did it a lot as a child. That's how they ate. Everything came from the garden. She had gardens that had flowers that I don't even believe exist on this planet. So beautiful, so fresh. The smell, the smell was heavenly. What exactly does that smell like? I can't explain the smell of joy. I can't explain the smell of pure elation. That's what it was. Everything around me was the greatest I could ever imagine it to be, which is why it's hard to give a summation of what exactly that looks like. During this time that I was with her, we walked around, we did get into the car, and she continued to show me all the things, the heavenly things that she did want on this planet that she strived for while she was here, but never was given a chance since her life was snuffed out at a very young age. She was in her thirties. So showing me these things gave me great comfort. I knew it was her. I knew it was her. And when she left, I wasn't sad. I wasn't feeling any anxiety. I wasn't feeling anything except, I don't want to say relief as much as just the joy of seeing her again and knowing that I would see her again. And that where she was, was amazing. And it was okay. And maybe it wasn't gonna be okay here because I was, I'm gonna suffer without her. But when I do see her again, it's gonna be magical. And it was magical. It was pure magic. It was visions from beyond because it's a beyond that is undescribable. And the visions are beyond what we could ever see in this world. The Rainbow Bridge is lovely and it is comprised of all of your dreams. That's the idea that I was left with, that every greatest thing you could hope for and wish for is exactly what you will see and what you will be surrounded by. You okay? 
Yeah. Okay. You know, sometimes this is cathartic because you aren't holding it in. You're actually sharing your experience, you know, with the world and also letting out all those emotions, you know, when you when you tell other people your experiences. And I think that's very important because in life we have so many shared experiences that, you know, you can really connect with people. And that's why I share a lot of the things I've been through, because I think it's important to share that connection. And I definitely saw, you know, connections between your mother visiting you, my mother visiting me. And um, I, as you were narrating, I, I came up with some questions so that we can dive just a little bit deeper. My first one I wrote was, how did you feel when you woke up? Like I could breathe again. So you said My you were- My air was lighter. You said you were 13 when you had this dream? No, um, I had just turned 13 when she had passed away. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so when, when was the dream? How long ago was it? It took about- 15 years for me to have that dream. So okay. I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's your story. You're sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Hard to believe I'm older than 25. <laughs> uh, things get heavy sometimes. You got to lighten it up a little bit. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so do you, rent, do you remember what went on the day that you had the dream? I don't remember that that day was significant in any way, shape, or form. And I don't remember there being something to trigger me into thinking of her per se. I think of her all the time, but there was nothing pressing that day. Because it sounds like this was very uplifting. And I was just wondering if, if this was the message you needed in that moment. Um, because it sounded like you were, I guess, missing your mother and you maybe felt like you wanted to make sure she was okay. Um, or yes. maybe that, was that something that could have been on your mind? Yes. Um, her suffering stays with me all the time, Phoenix. My last memories of her is her just disappearing in a hospital bed. So I really desperately needed to see her when she was happy and not being sucked away slowly mm -hmm. out of life. Oh, I, I can liberating. I can 100% relate because my mother died of diabetes and, you know, she was in and out the hospital a lot, but those last few times, uh, it was just really rough you know, the way she died and, uh, you know, just going downhill and, and you know, I don't want to make it about me <laughs> right now. I just want to say no, that I can relate. but it's that connective fiber. It's that connective fiber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recently ran across a picture of her that I took when she was in the hospital and I had to turn my, com I ain't turned my computer off so fast <laughs> because I just couldn't look, you know, I did not want to see I know I wanted to capture the moment in the moment, but the picture of, you know, me at her bedside, you know, well, okay, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like your mother was trying to give you peace of mind. I know that she was. I know because she tried prior to her death. I know she was trying to communicate with me. Unfortunately, she had lost her ability to speak and to do much. Very similar to, let's say, an ALS. She mm -hmm. was there, but she couldn't communicate. Mm -hmm. So I know that she was trying to give me a message even then because she kept patting the bed. Mm -hmm. And that so made me think it's sleep. Go. If it's, if it's not too much, uh, was it... Like an illness that took her away, or was it like a crime that took her away? Like she, she contracted AIDS from her boyfriend, mm. full blown, mm. mm -hmm. in the eighties, mm. and 
Mm. That was really before we were all there, the infancy of it. And it mm. was horrendous, Phoenix, especially in the hospital, because people were dressed in, you, it looked like they were going to the moon, you mm. know, moon suits. And I think I'm with her every day. I don't, I don't have to do that. What are you protecting yourself from? The unknown, the unknown. You know, and trust me, I'm, I just turned 50. So I am well aware of the 80s in that period. Uh, I had a childhood friend uh, I went to high school with, died at 17 of AIDS. You know, so, so yeah. And and I was just speaking to my members on SoapFam when I was telling them I was going through uh, midlife crisis, you know, as I was getting closer to 50. And I had to remember that I've been on this world 33 year more years than him. And I got to like treasure like every moment. So, so not making it about me. <laughs> Just relating. No, but that's that's Just... what we pull from it. That's what we pull from it. Because for a long time, mm. I didn't think I'd live past 37. Mm. My mother died at 37. She literally, mm. she turned 37 and a month later she died. Mm. so my whole life I was convinced not only that I would contract AIDS but that I would also pass away very early and that's real and since you've seen it you understand it's not oh yeah because I wasn't the only friend that died that's just only what I'm mentioning because I'm so young right that's young and that's horrific for a 17 year old Mm. to go through what people Mm -hmm. had to go through Mm-hmm. I mean, the treatment was just animalistic. All right. At best, I mean, we, at best. We can even relate that to the C-19, you know, where, where you know, don't come in this hospital if you ain't got a mask on, <laughs> you know. Right. Stuff right. like that, you know, because they didn't know what was going on. You know, all that information, you know, mm-hmm. all over the place from all different countries and trying to figure out what's going on. It was it was similar you know, to that in, in some ways as far as people's reaction to it. Right, um, right. And Fauci was there for both of them. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, a little levity. <laughs> we had somebody, we had the same person there for both of them. So um, we don't know if that makes him lucky or not, but we had the same mm. authority for both. So have you seen your mother again in your dream since then? Not in that fashion, no. Okay. So you feel like you can tell the difference between a visitation versus just a mental construct dreaming? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, one of the, unfortunately, go ahead. Unfortunately. Well, I'll say unfortunately, most of the time when I see her, it is in my PTSD dreams. Mm-hmm. And I know at some point we'll open that up a little more. But that is when I see her the most. And Mm. it's absolutely horrifying. And it disrupts not just my day, but my whole week, usually. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll definitely do a deep dive into that. Yes. (laughs) Speaking of... The name of of your talk show is Deep Dive. Speaking (laughs) of Deep Dive, Phoenix, now it's, it's time for that levity again. Speaking of Deep Dive, everyone. I have a show coming this fall called Deep Dive with R.C. Miles, coming to the United Creators Network. Be on the lookout. And the United Creators Network is a streaming service that's free. So yes. you'll be able to see the show. And, and, and it's controversial. I got to tell you, uh, the controversial subjects is going to have folks talking, thinking, discussing being mad, being happy. Uh, you know, I, I think you really got a good thing going with Deep Dive, and I can't wait to share that also with my audience. Thank you, Phoenix. The thing that I love most about Deep Dive is it ties in some of, some of the things that are the most deep to me, which is history, many events that have occurred, religion, where are the fibers that connect us? Instead of us looking at the fibers that separate us, 
why aren't we looking more at the connective tissue? Deep dive goes into many historical events and many things that have happened that maybe we need to turn the lens on. And that's what we're doing in deep dive. We're turning the lens and it's not always a pretty lens. It's not always a lens that people want to look through, but it's a lens that we should look through. And we need to learn. I mean, I ain't trying to get political, but they trying to, the stuff they want to teach kids is revisionary history. So right. that's why I'm glad that your show's coming because you don't revise history. You just tell it like it is. So right, we're I'm going to be looking forward to that. Yes, we're not reinventing the wheel. Just just showing you how the wheel was made. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yes. So you'll exactly also it. notice on the screen, if you haven't, uh, uh, R.C. Miles Cash App is on the screen. If you decide that you want to bless her with a donation, you know, anything, a dollar or more or whatever, uh, she's a volunteer. She's volunteered to be on the show and share her her stories uh, with us and a part of her. You know, we took a deep dive into her brain. And, you know, I really enjoyed that dream. If you did, too, um, you know, bless her. So with that... I, w- I would like to end this by saying I'm ready for the PTSD dreams. I, I want to know more. I, I want to go deeper inside the brain. And, I think um, and I look forward to seeing you again on the show. And uh, thanks for being on. Thanks for being my first guest. And, you know, this has been a great conversation. And I would love to have more conversations. So and let me know in the comment section, too what you think about today's uh, Dream Master podcast episode. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Sweet dreams. If I may. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) I just wanted to interject quickly. Thank you, Phoenix. I'm honored that you chose me as your first guest. I feel honored with that. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to the PTSD as well. I'm looking forward to looking into the mental health and mental illness aspect of our dreams and what our dreams are really trying to tell us and what happens due to mental illness in our dreams. Thank you. Thank you, RC. Thank you. And Thank you, I like to end the show by saying sweet dreams. Have a good one. Bye bye. Mm-hmm. Thank you.